Malaysia, Spain, and China have all had major influences on the distinctive Filipino cuisine. The natural ingredients that are found in the more than 7,100 islands and the surrounding water are enjoyed by more than 80 different ethnic groups, and their signature dishes are dependent on the available ingredients in their local terrain. We are now going to depart Los Angeles and travel to Detroit, Michigan to visit with Grace Sarucha, who works for an insurance company and recently was named a national media spokesperson for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Hi, my name is Grace Sarucha and I am a registered dietitian nutritionist of Filipino descent. Did you know that the Philippines is made of over 7,000, over 7,000 different islands. And that just gives you a picture of the variety of foods that the Filipino people enjoy. We get influences from other Asian countries, from Europe, especially Spain, and even America. Food is part of the culture. It's ingrained in the way we celebrate, the way we live, the way we enjoy life. Check out that sign up top. Um, Filipinos also like to dance too, so these are the perfect signs for us. But also, Filipino food and the uh, farming and the atmosphere of the tropics allows for so much variety. Different fun fruits and vegetables. Um, they enjoy everything from fish to pork. So the sky's the limit with the different food choices that you will enjoy if you try and dabble into some Filipino foods. There are so many different fruits and vegetables that you can enjoy in the Philippines. Um, bitter melon, and then fruits, tr think tropics, mango, pineapple, um, rambutans, logans, lonsones. They are also a great way to enjoy dessert, starting with the dessert first. Uh, we also love ube, which is a purple Filipino sweet potato. It has a beautiful color, delicious flavor, and yum. One of my favorites, for sure. Speaking of ube, a very traditional Filipino dessert, because it is warm there, is a play on shaved ice with lots of different sweet textures, and that would be halo halo. If you've ever heard of halo halo, it really actually means mix mix. So you mix it all together, enjoy the ice with it. There's a little bit of milk and then different candied and jellied um, flavors, including coconut. Moving on from dessert, there are probably, well, there's a lot of different staple Filipino dishes, but one that's really popular would be adobo. Adobo is a chicken and pork um, dish that's cooked and it's like cooked in the liquid of vinegar and soy sauce and garlic with a bay leaf, rich in flavor, uh, paired with rice and so yummy. Recommend it for sure. Rice is obviously a staple. Rice can be enjoyed with everything. There are lots of different stews and soups. Um, there's sinigang, which is a tamarind base. Tamarind is actually a fruit that grows in the Philippines as well. And you can have it with fish, with pork, with beef, and then lots of vegetables. Really good, a little bit tart too, which I really like. A little bit of that sour, playing with all the different flavor profiles. There's also pancit, which is noodles. I think almost every country in the world has some kind of noodle dish and the Philippines is no exception to that. We have a variety of different pancits um, and those flavors are also layered using different, again, meats and vegetables. There's pancit palabok, there's pancit Cantonese. So definitely a fun way to enjoy noodles. Fun fact, speaking of the culture, is that for Filipinos, you're supposed to have noodles on your birthday to signify a long life with the long noodles. So think about that the next time you're celebrating. Another thing to think of is our lumpia, which are, is our egg roll. It's a meat-based egg roll with some vegetables too sometimes, uh, rolled up and fried. Yes, the dietitian said fried, but it is also dipped and that is a very popular thing that Filipinos like to do. Sao sao is what it's called. It means you're dipping. So sao sao for the egg roll, the lumpia, 
would be uh, sweet and sour, sometimes a little spicy. And then there's, God, there's quite a few different dips, but a couple of them would be suka, which is a vinegar based dip. It has vinegar and garlic, oh, the more garlic, the better, pepper, and you could really dip anything in that. Meat, um, vegetable egg rolls, anything you want. There's also patis, which is a fish sauce. Usually, again, taking that salty fish sauce with something sour um, in the Philippines would be calamansi, which is a citrus fruit that is tangy. It's little and green, but inside it's orange. Um, here in America, oftentimes I use lemon because I can't always find calamansi. And then shrimp paste, again, salty. And shrimp paste is often paired with a kare kare, which is actually a peanut butter oxtail soup stew. Again, has the meat and then has vegetables and layering flavors. Something I don't want to forget to tell you guys, speaking of flavors and fun and culture and partying, is um, eating with your kamai. Kamai means hand. So kamayan, or a boodle fight is sometimes called, is a celebration of food and family and fun. And what happens is we lay out banana leaves and then all this food, everything from lechon, which is roasted pork, to other seafood, shrimp, lobster, crab, to other meats, um, chicken, pork, to rice and fruits and veggies and sawsawan, and everybody just kind of sits or stands together around this banana leaf beautiful table and enjoys food and each other. Thank you again for having me so much. My name is Grace DeRocha. I am a registered dietitian nutritionist of Filipino descent.